Why in the world would we have a dumb fight in such a, a lovely moment? Why would we do that? Well, it can come down to a single word. You might want to jot it down if you're taking notes. And that word is perception. We're going to talk about conflict. And uh, I'm going to give you just a little taste of something that Leslie and I do a lot, a thing we call fight night. You can put that up on the screen. There we go. And uh, uh, yeah, we, we have, uh, all of us have fights. Nobody's uh, immune. Doesn't matter how loving you are, we're all going to have conflict. In fact, my favorite verse in all of scripture on conflict, Romans 12, 18 says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, try to live at peace with everyone. Isn't that a good verse? You know why I like it? I don't know of another verse in all the scripture that has more qualifiers in it than that single verse. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, try, give it a shot, do what you can, right? But you're gonna have conflict. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna give you a little uh, taste of this. We're gonna have two rounds of uh, a mini fight night this afternoon here in Dallas. By the way, I married a, uh, a Fort Worth girl, so do you like me better? Yeah. We're gonna talk about why we fight with the person we love, and then secondly, I'm gonna give you one practical thing you can do when it comes to how to fight with the person that you love, because conflict really is the price we pay for a deeper level of intimacy. If you know how to fight a good fight, it can actually bring you closer together. So that's the quick game plan. How's that sound? All in favor say aye. aye. In fact, let's do this, just to make sure you have the right attitude as we talk about conflict in marriage, just turn to your spouse and say these words, you, really need this. <laughs> you feel a little bit better, don't you? We need sound on that uh, as well. So, and then just to kind of get your wheels turning here, because I know it's after lunch, it's late in the afternoon, uh, I want to have you process a little question. What's a dumb fight that the two of you have had? You know, we all have fights, but uh, there's certain kinds of fights. We have uh, bad fights that pull us apart, we have good fights, that's what we're gonna major on here in the next uh, few minutes. But then we also have this category of just dumb fights, like really? You know, I had a, a couple in my office a little while ago, they were fighting about whether or not their cat was fat or not. <laughs> that's a dumb fight, right? Um, and uh, I, <laughs> I was talking with a pastor and his wife a little while ago after we'd been at their church, and, and he said, I gotta tell you, I didn't want to tell you before because I was afraid you'd use it. And so I told me after, now I tell it to everybody. And uh, it, it was one of those evenings, they're headed up the stairs to go to bed. You know how the person that goes to bed last should flip the light switch off when you're both headed into bed, right? It's like a rule. And uh, so anyway, without talking about it, they're walking up the stairs. When they get to the landing of their stairs and they're headed down the hallway to their bedroom, for whatever reason on that particular night, they both just bolted down the high, you know, down the, the hallway to not be the last one for some reason, like a little head game to, to not turn the lights off. And then they both just dove into the bed and then they had this little tussle about whose feet actually left the ground last. And, and it got so seriously, they literally went to bed with the lights on, okay? That's a dumb fight, right? Uh, Leslie and I have certainly had our share of dumb fights. This happened a little while ago. We were coming home from a, a long trip, a series of speaking engagements, and, and you know, you're just exhausted. You've been in these situations, and we had a bunch of laundry and our suitcases, and we just went to bed because it was so late, and got up the next morning, and I came into the kitchen, and Leslie just surprised me. She made me like my favorite little breakfast, oatmeal and some fresh fruit, and she put a little creamer thing out, and I'm like, wow. I said, where did you get the energy to do this? You, you've gotta be exhausted like I am. And uh, I was just like genuinely, and words of affirmation are her love language. And so that's how I manipulate her. And, uh, <laughs> but it was really genuine in this particular situation. And, and I said, uh, I, said I, can't, I can't believe it. Well, that just really buoys her spirit. And she's like thinking, what else can I do? I love this feeling. And so she said, she's rounding the, the kind of the corner of our island in our kitchen. She said, I'm gonna go get our laundry done. Cause she knows I like the house like all put together and she goes, I'm gonna go get our laundry done. And so she's rounding it, she's walking fast and she's leaving the room, I, I, I clapped for her, all right? Hold on. <laughs> and she goes back in the laundry room and then she's starting to think to herself as she's putting the laundry in and she's thinking, why did he give me that like, like clap? Like what did he 
that's like sarcastic. Why did he do that? And, and uh, she got so kind of worked up and she's still kind of frazzled, tired from the trip. So she starts to tear up a little bit, right? She finally gets it together, gets the laundry and she comes out. But I could tell immediately she'd been crying. And every guy in here knows when his wife has been crying. And so when she came back out, I said, hey, what's wrong? And she said, uh, nothing, right? <laughs> and I said, well, it looks like you've been crying. She said, well, I have a little bit. I said, what happened back there? <laughs> she said, it's not what happened back there, it's what happened out here. I said, what do you mean? She said, I told you I was gonna do our laundry and you gave me this like sarcastic clap. I said, I didn't clap in a sarcastic way. I don't even know how to clap in a sarcastic way. <laughs> I said, you were moving so fast, my mouth was full of oatmeal, I had a spoon, I was just wanting you to know how much I appreciate it, and the best thing I could do in the moment was <laughs> applaud you. So then we had to process how apparently I don't clap the right way for the next 10 minutes. And <laughs> that's a dumb fight. Here we were literally both trying to bless each other, right? and we're having a fight. So let me do this. I'm gonna give you like 15 seconds just to see if the two of you can identify a dumb fight. Not a fight, but a dumb fight that the two of you have had. Go to it, we'll come right back together. So anybody like down where I can kind of hear you, willing to share a dumb fight like in a capsule summary really fast, because my time is limited? What? The bird feeder fight, what happened? We've all had the bird feeder fight, we can all identify with this. No, what happened? Bird feeder's next to the window by the house. It makes a mess, the seeds and everything. So you gotta put the bird feeder away from the house. So what's the fight? You wanted it by the window. You just told me it creates a mess and you need to... <laughs> now we're having a fight and I don't even know you. <laughs> we all, uh, thanks for sharing that right there on the front row too. That wasn't a plant. Uh, this is a, we all have dumb fights, right? Doesn't matter how loving we are. We have fights and they can be dumb, they can be bad, they can be good. How do we have good fights. Uh, I got to tell you, however, one more fight. Have you ever noticed this, that sometimes our dumbest fights happen when we are, even in romantic moments, like things are going just great, like you're just sitting there enjoying the birds out the window, and then suddenly you're like, you know, embroiled <laughs> in conflict. Leslie and I had this experience. We got invited to speak in, of all places, London, England. And in fact, when the invitation came in, I went in the kitchen, I told Leslie, I said, hey, we just got this invite to go to London to speak. I said, do you need to pray about this? Because I don't, let's go, right? <laughs> and, and it just so happened it was timed perfectly on our anniversary, and so uh, we did our speaking for a couple days, and then we had two days, 48 hours, just to have fun on our anniversary. The kids are at home with, uh, you know, grandma, and uh, unscheduled time, we're having lovely dinners, and, and doing all the stuff, you know, that you picture doing in London, and, and seeing the sights. Leslie even got me to go to high tea with her, which was awesome, and, uh, and on the last night, we had this early morning flight, and on the last night, we're just walking around the city, and uh, this passerby, look at this picture, could it be any more romantic? This passerby goes, hey, you want me to take your picture? And I said, great, yeah, I gave him my camera, you know, he snaps the picture, and you wouldn't think, looking at this, that within less than five seconds after this picture was taken, <laughs> on one of, truly one of the most romantic weekends of our entire married life, that we could be embroiled in conflict, but that's exactly what happened. The guy gives me the camera back. Leslie turns to me and she said, hey, we never did get those sweatshirts. I said, what sweatshirts? She said, what sweatshirts? The ones I've been talking about for the last two days, the sweatshirts for the boys. I said, uh, yes, of course, the sweatshirts. <laughs> and uh, 
She said, maybe that shop is still open. Let's go down there, even though it's late. And sure enough, it's open late for tourists. And so uh, I'm standing by the cash register. The guy's there. There's nobody else in the shop. It's just us. And, and Leslie's doing a little shopping to buy our boys a couple of sweatshirts. And, and uh, I'm looking at my phone or something. And she comes over after a couple minutes. And she said, hey, what about these two sweatshirts? What do you think? Think they should be matching sweatshirts, different colors, or what? And I said, hey, you know, I was thinking about this. You know, do the boys really even need sweatshirts? She said, yeah, they wear them all the time. They're going to love having, I'm going to get hoodie sweatshirts anyway. I'll be right back. She went back, did a little more shopping. She comes back. Hey, how about these two? I still don't know whether they should be the same color. I think I want to get them both hoodie sweatshirts though. And, and I said, hey, I was also thinking about this. You know, we're uh, traveling international, doing carry-on, one suitcase between. I don't think we even have room in our suitcase for two big fluffy sweatshirts. She said, do you have a problem with the sweatshirts? <laughs> I said, no, of course not. She says, well, it sounds like you do. And she says, I'm going to get something else. And she came back for the third time. Still, we're the only ones in the shop. She came back the third time. She says, this is it. I want to get these two sweatshirts. I said, great, let's get them. I reached down, I grabbed the sleeve of one of them, pulled it up, looked at the price tag, uh, price tag and said, good night. Look at the price. And I looked up before I'd even finished my sentence. She had thrown the sweatshirts at me, OK? <laughs> they still had hangers in them. I could have been injured. She <laughs> threw them at me. And she just walked out of the store, all right? The guy at the cash register looks at me like, hey, it's your wife, buddy, you know? <laughs> I hand off the sweatshirts to him. I step out of the shop thinking she's going to be waiting for me there. I can't see her anyplace. And then I look down the, she's way down the street, and she's really moving fast. And so I'm hustling, I'm jogging down there, and I finally catch up. I'm about five paces behind her. I said, hey, why are you walking so fast? She's a marriage and family therapist. I'm a psychologist. <laughs> I know from this story you wouldn't believe that, but um, <laughs> I should have told you earlier. She says to me, as marriage and family therapists sometimes say, without turning around, she said, angry energy. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny too. Um, I didn't laugh out loud because I'm not an idiot. And I finally catch up with her. She's standing on the corner waiting for the, the light to, to turn. And, and so I'm standing there and you could just feel, we're both eyes straight ahead, not saying a word. You could just feel the icy tension around it. You ever been there before? Yeah. And uh, so the light changes, we start walking. We have no agenda. We're not talking about where we're going. We're just walking with angry energy. We're walking, all right? <laughs> And we walk another couple blocks and, and we get to another stop and we're waiting for the light to turn. And I just thought, I'm gonna risk this. And I reached down and I grabbed her hand and I squeezed it three times. Now that's been our signal for a long time in our marriage. Like, hey, are we okay? And if I, if I get the three squeezes back, I know we're good, okay? I squeezed her hand three times, waited to get the squeezes back. And so we stood there maybe 45 minutes or so. And uh, uh, <laughs> no, I got the squeezes back right away. And, um, and I tell you this to let you know, in years gone by, it wouldn't have been like that. You would have felt, we would have felt that icy tension on the way back to the hotel. We probably would have had it on the airplane all the way back to Seattle. Who knows how long? Over sweatshirts? On one of the greatest weekends of our entire life? Are you kidding me? Yeah, over sweatshirts. Why would that happen? By the way, what do you think we were doing less than three minutes after the squeezing? Absolutely, getting ripped off at that sweatshirt shop. <laughs> <laughs> but the question remains, why? Why in the world would we have a dumb fight in such a, a lovely moment? Why would we do that? Well, it can come down to a single word. You might want to jot it down if you're taking notes, and that word is perception. Perception. So many of our conflicts are due to the way that we perceive the situation versus how our spouse sees the situation. Let me illustrate this real quickly. Here, as you can see on the screen, is a picture of two dogs. Everybody sees the two dogs. If you look at that a little bit more carefully, you might see something in between the two dogs. Do you see it? How many see the Space Needle? If you're from my part of the world, I live in downtown Seattle, there's a Space Needle I can see from my study. And that's, how many see the space needle and the two dogs at the exact same time? Raise your hands. Okay. Actually, you do not. <laughs> because it is literally impossible to see them at the exact same time. Now, you can flicker back in a millisecond, but one has to be the figure and one has to be the ground 
but you can't see them at the exact same times. And how many times is it like that in our own relationship? Hey, I know exactly what you're talking about. Would you just stop talking about this? I got it, all right? Do you? Do you really? Maybe you think you do, when actually you don't because of perception. Here's another one. This is an actual photograph of a dog. If you've seen it before, you instantly see the dog. If you don't see the dog yet, his nose is right in the middle. How many see the dog? Okay, help your spouse see the dog if they're not seeing it. His body goes off to the right. It's a Dalmatian dog. How many are still not seeing the dog? Oh, okay, let me show it to you. I'm gonna help you out up here. By the way, this is used, uh, we psychologists will use this sometimes as a part of a pretty sophisticated IQ test that determines what, no, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> Has nothing to do with IQ. Okay, now did you just hear that? Did you hear that? Let's all do that sound that was just taking place organically there. One, two, three. Okay, that is an incredible sound in a marriage relationship because that means the fight is over, okay? Oh, I didn't, why didn't you say, I did not, oh, okay, now I see, okay. I get it now, right? I see it finally. But how many times in our marriages do we get so frustrated because we're looking at that image that just went away and we're going, we're going, come on, can't you see it? It's plain as day. Now, here's what's so interesting about this image. I could show it to you at the end of the evening. In fact, I could show it to you a year from now without the blue on there, and you wouldn't have to go, wait, 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 where's the dog now? Because now you have drawn some conclusions. You have literally drawn a line around that image in your mind, and now you'll see it no matter what. And we sometimes do that in our conflicts as well. And we put our spouse, oh, he always does that. Oh, she would never do that, right? and we draw a conclusion, all because of perception. Now, this is not just uh, armchair psychology. We know this from research. In fact, this study, one of the biggest studies on conflict uh, in the last few years happened at Baylor University, not too far from here, uh, at least in the same state. And um, anybody from Baylor? All right, I'll speak slowly. And uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, it's an old joke, it's an old joke. Uh, <laughs> put, the, put that up on the screen. But this study concluded, don't send me an email, please, all right, I love you. Um, two reasons, this study, after a massive study, uh, they said that you can basically boil it down to two reasons that we fight with the person that we love, and uh, the first is perceived threat, and the, per and the second is perceived neglect. What is perceived threat? Well, it's that feeling when you get that this person is just like, uh, you know, controlling, attacking, judgmental, critical. Um, it, it's that feeling that it's just like, man, wh where's all this? You're not the boss of me. You know, it's kind of like that feeling. And, and then the perceived neglect is when it feels like they're just not on your team. It feels like, hey, man, we're, we're together on this, aren't we? And it, it feels like they're being neglectful or selfish and, and uh, you're just not a part of it. You can write it down. Every conflict we have is the result of one of these two perceptions or sometimes the combination of both. I have some friends, John and Lila. I have their permission to share this uh, little illustration. It's so, when, when John told me this, I said, man, if, you, if Lila would be willing, I would love to use this because it so perfectly illustrates perceived threat. It sounds so ominous, right? Perceived threat, like when's that happen? It happens more frequently than you might guess. Uh, it was a Saturday. They're putting together, um, they're kind of redecorating their home, their master bedroom a little bit. And so they're putting this big painting above their headboard and John is standing down at the foot of the bed. He's got a pencil in his hand. Lila is up there, and she's this slight little woman, and she's standing on the pillows, kind of rocking back and forth, trying to hold this painting. And John's going, no, 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 a little bit lower. Okay, John, I'm trying to, but it's really heavy, and my arms are hurting. Okay, Lila, let's just get this done, and we can move on. All right, no, no that's two more. Too, too much, too much. Back to the left, back to the left. That's good. No, 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 now you got to bring it down. John, I don't like your attitude right now. You ever been there? And uh, this goes on for a little while, and Lila finally says, I'm not doing this with you. I just don't like the way you're treating me right now. And uh, she said, I can't do it, and plus these pillows are too soft. It's, it's just not easy to do. And he goes, oh, honey, he said, I, I got a solution. He said, instead of staying on the pillows, stand over on the nightstand, and then you can kind of lean in, brace your body up against the wall, and hold the painting up there, and I'll come up and mark it with the pencil. And she says, no, that will never work. And she said, plus there's not even room on the nightstand. I said, what are you talking about? There's three books and a, and a lamp. This is the next thing out of Lila's mouth. She said, I hate your books.
and then she kicked him off of the nightstand. <laughs> now, if you knew Lila, you would go, what? This does not compute, right? But that's what perceived threat is like. When we're experiencing this partner that is being so controlling, so attacking, we do things that aren't even in our nature sometimes. Perceived neglect, what's a good illustration? Probably the sweatshirts, right? That's what Leslie was feeling in that moment. Here we are, we're having lovely dinners and walking around the city, it's so romantic and wonderful, and, and we're just talking, and she's thinking, well, if he didn't hear me on the sweatshirts, what else didn't he hear? I've been pouring out my heart, right? Perceived neglect. 